Cole Reagans went from averaging roughly 92 miles an hour, had two Tommy Johns prior, to transforming himself and now being a Cy Young candidate, an all-star, and ultimately a top five pitcher in war this year. What's up guys, this is Tyler Zombra at Tread Athletics, and let's talk a little bit about that case study and how it's come about here today. So when Cole first signed up, my job primarily is to do my homework. I wanna look at ball flight physics. Is he a pronator or a supinator? Speaking of which, we just dropped a video on pronation versus supination bias, which if you have haven't seen, go check that out. As I looked at Cole, it was very obvious early on that he was a pronator. So I looked at the arsenal, and again, this is from 2022. He averaged about 92-ish miles an hour, had a little cutter, the changeup was good, the curveball was really big and really slow, which you see from a lot of pronators. So from that standpoint, we knew that we needed to refine the arsenal as is. From a velocity standpoint, I saw that he had flashed a couple 95s, 96s in 2022 between AA and the big leagues. But one of the interesting things was he threw a couple cutters, even as a pronator, to the zero line around 90. So I knew that general arm speed, hand speed was there, but why were we not necessarily getting there on the fastball? As I did some more homework, I found a rich injury history. So I saw that Cole had two Tommy Johns. So one of the things we really have to think about with TJ is what are the compensations that are going to happen when guys go through that return to throw protocol? Typically, you're going to see a very pushy arm action as they try to really limit layback. They can't relax into layback. They're going to cheat slot high. They're throwing on flat ground all the time. So it's going to mess with lower half kinematics as well. And with Cole, you saw these indicators big time. He would drop into the back leg very, very early. He'd be squatty. He'd be pushy out of the lower half. He cheated the arm slot high. And while he had really good induced vert, I thought to myself, is this a scenario where if we actually made him a bit more rotational, if he rotated in a better window and maybe dropped that slot a tick, could we sacrifice an inch or two of vert for a mile an hour or two? Now, obviously I didn't suspect that this would lead to three, four, five miles an hour at times, but this is kind of what came about for Cole. And again, I really want to iterate that he flashed some signs of this in his career, but again, it wasn't really anchored in there. Chasing after vert, just some things with the TJ rehab throwing protocol that kind of corrupted him. As I went back even further on the initial stage of this, I found video of him in Spokane from 2017. He probably doesn't even know this, but super, super out of slot high. The arm was a little bit later at that point in time, but super linear delivery. And so this is a concept of coil or clear that's discussed a lot, especially as it pertains to left-handers, where they typically are a bit more linear and lack rotation. So for me, after conversations with Cole, he mentioned that he felt super pushy with the lower half, that he did feel semi-pushy with the arm. So I thought, okay, let's sell out for rotation. This guy's been doing TJ rehab stuff. He hasn't spent a lot of time down the slope. He hasn't rotated super aggressively. He probably hasn't done any form of a turn and burn, a rotational step back. All these rotational elements of the throw, he hasn't done. And it just so happened, he's in a great training environment in Tallahassee with Cole Sands, who's another tread athlete who works super hard. I knew he'd be in a good environment. As you mix in rotational setbacks, try to be more rotational in figure eight patterning, try to throw behind the lead leg. Honestly, getting him away from worrying about vert at all or cheating the slot high was an instant boost in terms of the velocity. So we saw as he started to do these turn and burns, the velo ticked up big time. Rotational setbacks and plyos look super clean. As he transitioned then to the mound in bullpen, we had 94, 95. I mentioned this to Jeff Passan, his first pin, he's pissed off about throwing 94. And that's when I knew he really was going to have it. This guy just averaged 92 miles an hour in the big leagues, and he's pissed off that he's throwing 94 in a bullpen. The competitive mindset he has, it's kind of ascended him to the next level. As he went to spring training with Texas, he flashed this higher velo potential. Texas broke him in the big leagues in 2023, and he was coming out of the pen. Now, this is a really important message that I think a lot of guys really need to embrace is he's coming out of the bullpen very sporadic usage there was no regular work coming through and again as a pronator we needed to really work to refine the arsenal and one thing in Cole's offseason training again looking at him from the pronator standpoint the curveball was way too big way too slow he averaged like 74 with it in 2022. And so our big thing was, hey, you've got to throw this curveball near 80. The shape can condense, but we have to throw it 80. Because for me, regardless,
regardless if he added velocity or not to the average of 92, the curveball had to be harder. So in that, he started training for that, which ironically enough, you often see with a lot of pronators, if you make them try to throw breaking balls hard, not necessarily pushing in range supination, but just in general to apply some force to the outside of the ball, they rotate in a better, tighter window. And Cole is a very tight rotator, and that is what has really taken the velo to the next level. So as he improved the velocity on the curveball, again, he broke in the bullpen in the big leagues in 23, very sporadic usage. We couldn't really refine the arsenal. He flashed a ton of really, really positive signs there in Texas. Obviously, Kansas City identified that. And I remember talking to Cole because, as I again mentioned in 22, he flashed a couple cutters near 90. Some of them scaled down to gyro. If you look this year, some of them have scaled down to death ball territory. So we knew the potential was there. It just had to be refined. In Texas, he was throwing probably 55%-ish fastballs. And then when he gets traded to Kansas City, the velo potential had gone up. So therefore, the breaking ball potential had gone up. And I want to give special credit to Zach Bove there in Kansas City, who has done an incredible job with Cole. Zach is a phenomenal communicator, whether it's relating to Cole's mechanical profile, to his workload management, all things considered, Zach has done an amazing job with Cole. And if you look over the last two years, Cole hasn't really thrown more than 40% fastballs in Kansas City. So it's been really cool to see, not only has he taken this velocity jump, but he has also tweaked his usage significantly. So if you go look now, he has a changeup, he has the cutter shape, he can scale that down to gyro death ball territory. He's got the harder curveball. I mean, he's getting to the point now where he can add and subtract on the fastball as needed, but that mechanical efficiency that came from a lot of that rotational work both lower half and upper half wise not cheating the slot high those concepts that got him away from a little bit of that overall pushy nature from when he first started with tread in 2022 has really just transformed into this big rejuvenation of Cole's career and pushed him to where he is today so ultimately a multitude of things velocity potential certainly increased by more rotational mechanisms got him away from the pushy components and again very common in TJ rehab cases sit into the back leg early pushy off the back leg pushy with the arm action because in TJ Rehab, guys just want to see that pure ball flight, be behind it, pushy. Let's sacrifice a little bit of vert. Got a lot of velo in return and the rest of the arsenal improved as well. And again, he's taken that to another level with his arsenal and usage in Kansas City. So that's a bit of Cole Reagan's overview and story. Hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next video.